The electronic fuel injection reduces fuel consumption of the Vitarazzi Monster engine by about 40%. In this video, I want to perform an experiment with a regular carbureted Vitarazzi Monster trying to achieve the same fuel efficiency. And meanwhile, I will disclose the secret how the EFI does the magic. Wish me luck because I will be flying the machine at the very edge of the physical capabilities of the engine, very much on the danger zone. Everything on an aircraft must have a reason. Ignore the status quo, imagine from scratch, and build what you can justify with science. Fail five times to succeed once. This is how we innovate paramotors, and for you, understanding the science behind will make you a smarter pilot. Before we start, let's have a look at the Vitorasi's claims of, about the fuel efficiency. Here's a chart um, from the user manual of, of both engines, where the blue line is the fuel consumption of the Vitorasi with the carburetor, and the red line is the fuel consumption of the fuel-injected MOSA. Now, the green dot, that's my value. In the long time average, my fuel consumption is 4.3 liters per hour, me being 200 pounds, 90 kilos, flying a 20 square meter Ozone Viper XC at speeds of 50 kilometers per hour, 30 miles per hour. So my fuel consumption is 4.3, which is slightly higher than claimed by the Vitorazzi. And my fuel consumption with the EFI is 2.8 liters, which exactly matches the chart that Vitorazzi uses in their user manual. Now the big question is, how does the EFI achieve that difference in fuel consumption? The answer is obvious, it's ejecting less fuel. Uh, and the answer is in the next chart of the user manual, that is the EGT temperature, the, uh, the exhaust gas temperature. Now most pilots have no reason to pay attention to this chart because most engines have the EGT sensor not installed and pilots have nothing to compare the numbers with. But when I've seen this chart for the very first time at the Vitorazzi training days in the Vitorazzi factory, my first thought was like, hey, wait a minute, I've seen these numbers before. So let's roll back seven or eight years ago when I was getting ready for the Icarus Trophy. The Icarus Trophy was an amazing adventure in the United States. We were flying unsupported cross country for a distance more than 2000 kilometers, 1100 miles. It took me nine days. And obviously on such a long cross country adventure, the aim is to reduce fuel consumption, to fly longer stretches and reduce the necessary fuel stops. I experimented a lot with, with the Vitarati Monster engine with a carburetor, and I've learned a lot about carburetors. In this video, I want to reproduce that experiment so you can see for yourself. For the purpose of the experiment, I did three modifications on the Monster Plus classic carbureted engine. The first modification was installation of the EGT sensor. In order to, that, to do that, I needed to replace this part of the exhaust. This is, this is the exhaust from the Monster factory. It has a nut where you can insert the exhaust gas temperature. And so I inserted that one. Here's a little computer and here's the PPG meter made by Fly Henry to show me the values in the air. I did the measurements. Uh, just to double check the claims made by the Vittorazzi. On this chart, the blue line is the exhaust gas temperature as claimed by Vittorazzi in their user manual, and the green dots are my measurement values. So at 5,500 RPM, I had 585 degrees Celsius uh, in, the, in the exhaust gas. At 7,000 RPM, it was slightly higher, and at the peak power, I was slightly over uh, their values. But in general, the exhaust gas temperature doesn't change much throughout the whole power band. You could say that it's pretty constant in the whole power band. The modification number two that I did is the installation of the remote controller for the high jet on the carburetor. By rotating this knob, I can close and open the high jet on the carburetor through these two Bowden cables. So, and I, and I did that. So I took off with standard settings, climbed to 500 meters, and I remained at the level flight and slowly, slowly closing the high jet. Here are the numbers that I found. 
The EGT didn't react at the very beginning, so closing it by 5 to 10 minutes from the standard position did not increase the EGT much. And I have to say, my standard position was a rather conservative one, that is uh, one full turn open plus 20 minutes. So, as you can see, closing it by 5 to 10 minutes from the standard position, it doesn't change much. But if you continue closing the high jet further, the exhaust gas temperature starts to rise pretty dramatically and the peak was reached around 30 to 35 minutes closed from standard position. The exhaust gas temperatures rose to 680, 675. The engine had immense power, it was very reactive and I can say I did not dare to add power beyond 5,500 RPM. So all these measurements were done at 5,500 RPM. Now when I continued and I closed by 40 minutes from the standard position, suddenly the exhaust gas temperatures dropped just a little bit. So I sense that this might be the range where the engine is already starving of fuel. It was running very hot, starving. At this moment, when I added throttle, nothing really happened. The engine was unable to reach higher RPM than 6,000 and uh, it wouldn't be even possible to climb. And when I closed the engine further, all the way down to 45 minutes from standard setting, the engine had a tendency to die. I just closed it and, and it almost died, so I opened up a little bit, tried again, repeated a few times, it was every time the same. So I can say that about 45 minutes close from standard position is the very edge where the engine would simply stop working, it wouldn't receive enough fuel for, for running. I didn't go higher with the RPM because the engine was running very hot and it was very reactive and when, when I tried to add throttle the cylinder head temperature was rising very rapid, rapidly and it was it was rising to 260 270 degrees and that's where I stopped uh, because because I believe the cylinder head temperature would just keep rising until I blow a hole in a piston now how quickly could that happen Honestly, I believe it would be very quick. I think it would be a matter of seconds, maybe 20, 30 seconds. It's just a guess. I didn't go all the way that far. I didn't want to damage my engine. And this is also the reason why Vittorazzi puts a seal on the high jet. With the engine this lean, you simply cannot take off. You can lean the engine all the way that far, like 30, 40 minutes from standard settings, but you just can't add throttle and you can't go beyond 5,000, 6,000 RPM. And the explanation is very simple. While the engine is capable of absorbing the heat and dissipating the heat of uh, 6,700 degrees exhaust gas times 5,000 RPM per minute, it wouldn't be able to do that 8,600 times per minute. It would be just too much heat. You get the same heat but more frequently in a minute, and the engine would seize or, or blow a hole in a piston. Very dangerous settings. I don't know how, how close I was to, the, to damaging the engine. I don't, want, I don't want to find out. How do my numbers compare to standard setting? Let's put my numbers into a standard chart. So this is the same chart as last time, and you can see the blue line, which are the standard values from the Vitorazzi user manual and the red dot indicating 670 degrees Celsius as you can see is completely off the charts. It's just so hot. Let's compare this with the values of the EFI. Here we have the exhaust gas temperatures of the carbureted monster and the EFI compared and it seems like the EFI is running way hotter. It seems like it's running 150 to 200 degrees hotter than standard. Now, this is misleading information. I double-checked that with Santino from Vittorazzi, and the main takeaway is that these numbers are not directly comparable, because on a standard monster, on the standard factory exhaust, the exhaust gas temperature is positioned here, a lot further away from the cylinder than on the uh, EFI. EFI, they, for, for whatever reason, they decided to place the exhaust gas temperature in a different place. So, 
you have different reading. To compensate for this difference, you simply need to subtract um, 70, 80 degrees Celsius. And here is the modified chart. I discussed this with Santino and he confirmed that I'm kind of correct. So when I placed the EFI EGT into the same perspective, into the same chart, you can see that what I did during this exper experiment, closing the high jet by about 40, 35, 40 minutes, I achieved the same leanness of the engine in the mid-range as the EFI measured by exhaust gas temperatures. So the third modification I did to this trusted engine is installation of the additional fuel bottle. I filled this bottle with one liter of fuel exactly and the engine is sucking fuel from the bottle but the bottle is a closed system so as the engine sucks fuel from here the bottle will suck fuel from the main tank. This way there is always one liter remaining in the bottle. I took off and when I reached 500 uh, meters altitude and leveled, uh, leveled up for a level flight, I opened this valve, this which is an air intake, a breather for the bottle, and as I introduced air from outside into the bottle, it stopped sucking fuel from the main tank, and slowly the fuel level was going down. I started the stopwatch and I stopped the stopwatch when the engine died. This way I get a very, very exact measurement of how many minutes I can fly with one liter of fuel level flight only, excluding the start and climb and, and so on. So it's a very exact measurement in flight. Now, I did this measurement with the carburetor setting of 35 minutes close. That was the hottest temperature I could achieve with with, uh, with this uh, modification. So I, as it was running the hottest, I assumed it was running the leanest. I assumed that's the setting for the lowest fuel consumption. So let's see the numbers. With one liter of fuel in this tank, I was able to fly for 23 minutes until I ran empty and the engine died. Not only matches the performance of the EFI, it actually outperforms the EFI. I could be proud of myself, but but in fact I'm not. That's act, This is actually a problem. I don't know. Maybe I was too lean. Maybe I was a little bit too far and I got away with it. I flew for 23 minutes at this setting, but maybe at the expense of life expectancy of the engine tear and wear on all the parts inside. I don't know. Maybe had I been a little bit less lean, I wouldn't achieve that fuel economy. Maybe had I been a little more lean, I would burn a hole in the piston. And of course, it's a very risky maneuver. I climbed, I took off and climbed with standard settings and only when I reached my level flight, I closed the jet. Had I added throttle with these settings, I was most likely burn a hole in a piston within seconds. So if I wanted to climb, I would go, need to go back to standard setting, climb and then lean again. And you only forget once and you burn the hole in a piston. That's why Vitarati is not offering this system to regular pilots, and that's why I am not using this system on my regular flights either. I used it, I had it for the uh, Icarus Trophy. I didn't dare to use it at the Icarus Trophy either. So I had this system, all the measurements done and preparations, but when I flew the Icarus Trophy in Idaho and Utah over those vast, endless empty spaces, the Wild West, there's no signs of civilization around, I didn't dare to use it. I, I, I just thought that if I burn a hole in the piston here, uh, that would be a two-day extraction. I didn't have the balls to use it in real life. So it usually sits on the shelf because I believe it's just way too dangerous. And without all the proper know-how, it's too risky. <laughs> So this is what I believe the EFI is doing. It's running very lean in the mid-range, 5,500 to 6,000 RPM. But the moment you add throttle, it will inject a bit more fuel, kind of like reaching up the mixture to cool the engine. And it's doing it computer controlled. And it's not only computer controlled based on the fuel map, but it's also computer monitored and adapted. So the computer constantly monitors the exhaust gas temperature and it makes continuous non-stop adjustments 
to the air to fuel mixture. I did just one experiment and I did just one measurement in very specific conditions, temperature, humidity and so on. And when it, when it came to a real application, I just didn't have the guts to use it because I didn't trust my own data. And there's a very, very valid reason. You need to test it a lot more to be confident that what setting is the correct one. So I believe, I trust that Viterati did sufficient testing and they put all their brains into the firmware to do it for you. So the innovation that the EFI is introducing is not reducing the fuel consumption. We had that before and competition pilots have achieved similar fuel efficiency by different means. The innovation is to making the low fuel consumption accessible to any pilots simply by leaving the computer doing all the math. You just push the button and you have the same efficiency that until now only competition pilots could have achieved. Of course the EFI doesn't only do that. It also adjusts the low needle so if the engine is cold it will inject the right amount of fuel when it warms up, it will change the fuel map, also adapts to altitude, make sure the engine always idles perfectly and always starts. It's, it's overall a much sophisticated device. I'm a big fan of the innovation. I'm not a big fan of the price of the EFI, but I understand it. I understand how much labor, time and money they had to invest in the project. Um, this video also was quite time-consuming project, so please support our YouTube channel by hitting the like button, sharing it, or commenting. And if you would like to support beyond that, there is one little thing you could do. Next time when you are purchasing Harry Motor Gear, please consider the Scout. Thank you very much and fly safe.